Hello and welcome to the video series about BIM 9 and private BIM clouds. My name is Brian Smith and in this video we're going to see what it's like to access a Revit model over a private BIM cloud. If this happens to be the first video you've watched in this six video series, I'll show you how to check out the other videos at the end of this demonstration. For now though, let's see how a private BIM cloud works. I'm connecting to the private BIM cloud with a MacBook Pro from my home office here in Virginia Beach, Virginia over a Wi-Fi connection. The private BIM cloud is physically located in the BIM 9 office in Las Vegas, Nevada. Now I'm going to switch my desktop to the MacBook Pro and to get things started I'm just going to go down here and launch a remote desktop connection client and there's many different ones that you can use. There's some by ITAP or you can use the Microsoft RDC, um, but I'm using the Aircom Blaze client and BIM9 has basically formed a relationship with Aircom and they've created a special client for us that we'll talk a little more about later on. Uh, but essentially all these settings is what tells my laptop here in Virginia Beach how to connect to the remote BIM cloud in Las Vegas. So I'll just hit connect and all in real time, real quick, just logged into a Windows 7 desktop on the remote BIM cloud and brings me to a full screen Windows 7 desktop. Now I was logged in a little earlier so just think uh, think of this as I was working at this station and, and walked away and now I've just come back and sat back down and you can see that I already have Revit running here and that's just to kind of uh, avoid some of the startup time here for the sake of this demo. But now I'm in Revit and what I want to do is I want to pull up this advanced sample project and I like using this project. First off, it's, it's fairly small, uh, 13 meg in size, but it's a model that ships with Revit so you can use this and open it to compare on your own system. And this is uh, loading this in real time. Plus it's a fairly complete model. There's a lot of geometry in it and it's um, a good representation of a typical project. And there we are. Now the model is, is loaded and I'm just going to switch over to a plan view, the entry level plan view. And again, now I'm, I'm just working the way that I normally would. I'm going to roll my mouse wheel here and I'm zooming into this uh, entryway area mechanical space and just as I might do in, in real life, I'm going to select this door and maybe I'll go in and change the type of door by selecting the uh, pull down here and maybe I'll just change this to a single door for an example and I can grab this door and I can move it around and do whatever I would normally do. I'll just change some, uh, oops, change some text here, mechanical. I can pan around, zoom in and out just as I normally would, just by rolling the mouse wheel. All right, I'm going to switch to a 3D view, and you can see that uh, pulled that up almost instantly. Everyone likes to see how the 3D performance works. I'm going to hold down the uh, shift key and just kind of orbit around. You can see how smooth that is. And just for the sake of doing something a little more interesting, I'm going to go in and orient this 3, 3D view here to a uh, section view, the section through the main stair. There we go. I'll just uh, zoom in a little bit and um, pick a piece of furniture here and we'll orbit around that piece of furniture so you can see the section a little better and again this is performing just as though you know as though you were sitting there at the workstation in in Las Vegas now as I said this is basically a uh, small model so let's open up one that's a little bit larger I'll just close this one out and I won't say the changes and this will take me back to our opening screen and this time I'm open a model that's a little bit larger so I'm going to choose open and I want to point out that this private BIM cloud is connected to a network just as though your private BIM cloud will be connected to your network 
and uh, the model that we picked for the example before was on the local C drive, but this time I'm going to go to our network K drive. See a bunch of folders here. I'm just going to go to uh, a data set where I know that we have a model that's about 97 meg, a little larger than that. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open that. And while that's opening, I want to say that, you know, even with this being a, almost a 100 meg file, which normally takes a while to do, the system that we're working on is, is highly optimized specifically for Revit. And I also mentioned a little bit about the Aircom Blaze client that we're using. Um, Revit is a little less picky about the client that you use, but we worked with Aircom and they actually made some enhancements to the Aircom Blaze client that allowed us to do some special things when working with AutoCAD. So if you've ever worked remotely with AutoCAD, you may notice that there's a lot of cursor bounds, meaning when you move your crosshairs around, it takes a while for the cursor to hang up, and they actually were able to uh, address that and fix that and make it uh, workable. All right, so now our model is open. And again, you know, this is a, a model that's almost 100 meg, but you'll, <laughs> you'll notice that this is probably not the best way to construct a model. It's actually one of these smaller models just duplicated a bunch of times. But I will go in and now orbit around inside here. And again, keep in mind that this is recording in, in real time so you can see what exactly what the performance is of orbiting and spinning around here. And to get a better feel for what this model looks like, I'm going to switch over to uh, plan view. And what's one thing that's not a little normal here <laughs> is when it's cutting the uh, plan section view here, it's actually cutting through all 24 of these models. And there we are. So you can see that all of these are basically the same model. This one has a little extra geometry, so I'm just going to roll the mouse wheel here to zoom in and give you a better idea of what the performance is, seeing what kind of a model that this that this is. So zooming and panning around, everything is, is running very smooth. Again, just as though you were sitting at the workstation there in Las Vegas. So at the end of your session, when you're done working, I'm just gonna go up to the pull down here. I'm gonna close out of this model. We didn't really make any changes. And uh, I'll just minimize Revit for right now. But at the end of the day, um, when you're all finished for the day, you would just go down and log off your remote desktop session logs me out of the system and then returns me to my MacBook Pro desktop and then we could go on to work on any of the other applications that we needed to or connect back to the remote desktop later on. So now let's take a look at a diagram of what we just did. So here's our private BIM cloud. Keep in mind it's actually one physical computer that has several optimized virtual machines allowing up to five people to log in and work simultaneously on a single piece of hardware without any decrease in performance. You cannot even tell when others are logged in and working. So here we are, a remote user. We connect over the internet through an uncommon port and firewall to the private BIM cloud. The PVC would sit in your office normally in the same vicinity as your file server. So when you saw me open the model in Revit, I could have just as easily navigated to a network share or map drive and loaded the model from there. You'll also notice that others within the same office at their workstations will be working just as they normally would. Opening models on drawings from the server, there's no change in the normal process for these guys. Finally, over here you can see thin clients. We'll expand on this in a video about problems a private BIM cloud solves, but for now, think of these computers as low-power to older computers. These users can connect to the private BIM cloud over the internal local area network and get the same performance on their old clunkers as you would from a high-powered workstation. So now you've seen how a private BIM cloud performs. Instead of bringing the data to us, we went to the data. The only information that's traveling over the internet are screen updates, mouse clicks, and keyboard taps. You can even print and plot right over the private BIM cloud in either location. 
Finally, you can choose what you'd like to learn about a private BIM cloud next. Go back and watch the introduction to private BIM clouds if you missed it, or continue on to learn about the hardware people are using to host a private BIM cloud, what challenges the private BIM cloud solves, hear what some clients have to say about BIM 9, or how to get started with a BIM 9 private BIM cloud in your office, including some specification and pricing information. Thank you for watching, and again, I'm Brian Smith. For any other information, be sure to check us out on the web at BIM9.com.